So this is a question that is always asked about, well, I have good friends, I have good neighbors, I have relatives, I have uh, people in my workplace, they are good people. Or maybe I don't know them, but there are a lot of good people in this world. What will happen to them in the Akhirah? So no one can ask Allah and challenge Allah in what Allah does. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون No one لا يسألوا عما Whatever Allah does, nobody can ask Him. He is not asked about what He does. This is what the Quran says. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون They will be asked about what they do. So that is the first point to answer this question. And that is, we are not in a position to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah follows His own laws and He has legislated those laws. The second point, when it comes to assigning mercy, assigning adab, assigning heaven and hell, we have a very, very clear rule. We do not assign individuals to heaven and hell. We do not assign personalities to Jannah and Nar, to Rahmah and Adab. We talk about generalities, not specifics. Okay? Your friend Michael dies. No one has the right to say if Michael died as a Muslim or non-Muslim. He's going to go to heaven, he's going to go to hell. No one. Your friend Mustafa dies. No one can say Mustafa was a pious man, he's going to go to Jannah. Doesn't matter. We are quiet about individuals except if Allah has said تَبَّتْ يَدَ أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبْ مَا أَغْنَ عَنْهُ مَا لُوَ مَا كَسَبْ سَيَصْلَى وَتْ نَارًا We can say Abu Lahab is in Nar because Allah says so. Otherwise, we are quiet about individuals. We never assign any individual to any specific fate, but we speak in generalities. We speak with conditions. Those who believe and do righteous deeds will go to Jannah. This is generalities. Those who reject Allah will go to Jahannam. This is generalities. Mustafa, Michael, who might have done this and that, we are quiet because we do not know what is inside of them. Okay? The third point. It is very, very clear in the Quran and Sunnah that there is one path that leads to Jannah. In the Dina in the Lahil Islam. The religion that is acceptable to Allah is Al Islam. Allah says in the Quran, Qul kunu hudan an usara al matahdu, bal millata Ibrahima Hanifa. Wa kalu kunu hudan an usara tahtadu. They said, not Allah, they said, be Yahudi, be Nasrani, you shall be guided. Bal no. Bal here is harfu idrab, you negate what preceded it. No, I will follow the Milla of Ibrahim who worshipped Allah alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقُبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ This is the most explicit verse in the Quran that is imaginable. You cannot even word a verse that is more explicit. It's not even possible in the Arabic language. Whoever chooses any other way of life other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him, and he shall be in the hereafter amongst the losers. You cannot get more explicit than this. Now, having said this, I then went on and I said, all of this we are talking about the paths that lead to Allah, and we say there is one path that leads to Allah, only one path. And this does not mean that if somebody says he's on the path, that he is actually on it. I.e., somebody says he's a Muslim, doesn't mean he's going to go to Jannah. Doesn't mean it automatically. Nor does it mean that if somebody is not on the path, that they might not be forgiven as an exceptional scenario and be caused to enter Jannah. The path does not lead to Jannah if it's not Islam. But it is possible that somebody on another path might be forgiven by Allah due to specific circumstances. And we all know exceptions are not made the rule. The rule is very clear. What is the rule? Whoever searches for a religion other than Islam, whoever chooses a religion other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be from the losers in the hereafter, from the khasid in the hereafter. So it is possible that a person is not a Muslim and ends up in Jannah. That is an exception. We never make it the rule. We never say, oh yes, non-Muslims are entering heaven. No, or else you say something like this, the purpose of Islam becomes meaningless. We said there are exceptions. How do we know there are exceptions? Firstly, Allah says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. 
And Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رسولا. We will not punish anyone until the Prophet has been sent. And that's why our Prophet ﷺ said that whoever hears about me and then rejects me. Aha! So the one who doesn't hear about our Prophet ﷺ, or our scholars add to this, the one who doesn't hear correctly, i.e. he had a very negative image of Islam and he didn't know what Islam was, he never read the books of Islam, he never met a Muslim. So this person, what is his fate? Do we automatically say they're going to go to Jannah, which is what some of our previous scholars said? That is also not very logical because if the one who doesn't know Islam automatically enters Jannah and you are a Muslim and you meet this person, why should you give him da'wah when automatically he's entering Jannah? Think about it like that. This also doesn't make any sense. Some of our scholars said this, but it makes no sense. The correct position is mentioned in the hadith in Musa Imam Ahmad, that our Prophet said, there will be four people on the Day of Judgment. And he mentioned them. The old man who couldn't think straight when Islam came to him, the, the, the decrepit old man, number one. Number two, the deaf person. Remember, before there was sign language, a person born deaf meant he is not communicating. Nobody can talk to him, doesn't understand anything. The you know, Helen Keller inventing sign language changed the whole world for that group of people and allowed them to communicate. Otherwise, for centuries and centuries, a person born deaf could not communicate with anything. And so there was as if they were living in a different dimension. So uh, the one born deaf and the one born between two prophets, Ahl al-Fatra, right? And the one up to, uh, the no prophet was sent to. So the Prophet mentioned categories. They will say to Allah on judgment day, Oh Allah, it's not our fault. And each one will give an excuse. So Allah will say, what if I had sent you a prophet and you saw the prophet? Would you have believed in him? Of course, on judgment day, what will they say? Yes, of course. So Allah will say, I will test you. Then Allah will send an angel and the angel will have something that looks like fire and they will recognize him to be from Allah as an angel. And the angel will say, if you truly believe in Allah, jump into this. And so those who trust Allah and jump in will be saved by Allah and enter Jannah. And those who don't, will have rejected. The point is there will be a test on judgment day for those people. We can make qiyas upon this and say anyone who did not hear of Islam and lived in times and places where there was no access to Islam, that person will be tested on judgment day, no problem. Okay, bottom line that this question we understand why it's so relevant, people want to ask it, we understand why people get emotional, but at the same time, from a textual and logical and rational perspective, from a unanimous perspective, every single evidence of the Sharia and our common sense tells you, religions are either right or wrong, there's no middle path. Yes, we live in this world in peace and harmony, no question about it. Yes, we have good adab, no question about it. Yes, we are kind and merciful, no question about it. But on judgment day, there is one religion that will be rewarded. And there is one religion that is correct. That you cannot both simultaneously be correct. Either it is okay to worship an idol or it is not okay. Either you bow down in front of Jesus Christ or you don't. Either you worship Allah or you don't. There is no middle ground. So we say, in the deen in the Allah islam and this is what we preach to the people. But we also realize there will be exceptions. There might be many exceptions, but we never make the exceptions into a, into a what? Into a rule. We never preach the exceptions. Because when you preach the exception, you're negating the rule. You don't go and tell people, oh guys, don't worry, many people will be forgiven on judgment, they go ahead and commit sins. No, you don't do that, do you? You say the general rule, the sinner is going to be punished. That's what we preach, right? That's the whole purpose. Similar thing goes over here. We preach there is one way, and on the day of judgment, there will be exceptions. Now one final point, again, I went into a lot of detail, but this is very, uh, this is very, sensitive issues, and people get very emotional, understandably, understandably. The real, one of the real problematic issues in our time. So we talked about the one who has never heard of Islam, but was overall religious. We hope good for that person. We hope good for that person on judgment day. We don't pronounce any judgment. That that person never heard of Islam. Talk about the tribes of Brazil. Some, you know, or, or go back 500 years, the people living in this land, the native Indians. They would never have heard of Islam. We hope good for them, that if they were faithful to their morality, and they try to live good lives and inside everybody knows what is a good life. We are hopeful, but we don't pronounce a judgment. We talked about those who have the potential to hear Islam, but they don't do so. And we say that's not good news. 
where that's not that optimistic. If they just lock themselves shut in their houses, if they just want to live their lives like animals and don't think about higher cause, they are falling short. So that's a problem on them. 